and welcome to It Is My Life Show with Felicity. Today's topic is domestic violence and pregnancy. And to discuss this topic with me is a lady, a professor of women's health at King's College Hospital here in London. And she spent 30 years as an obstetrician looking after pregnant women who has complications. And now she works in Sexual Assault Referral Center, providing forensic examination and aftercare for victims of rape and sexual assault. Please welcome Dr. Susan Bewley. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Felicity. Fantastic. So, Susan, we're going to get cracking very quickly. Why did you choose to be an ONG uh, doctor in the first place and explain what ONG is? ONG stands for Obstetrics and Gynecology. Okay. It's basically a doctor who looked after pregnancy and the, the uh, problems of women's anatomy. So, everything from abortion to cancer to pregnancy. Fantastic. So, and you too, you did the first study of domestic violence in pregnancy in the UK. That's right. Yeah. So, what did you find? Well, we were quite surprised to find how common domestic violence in pregnancy is. Um, maybe ten percent plus of women experience it. And if you ask a woman, often she won't tell you. But if you ask several times, you're more likely to find it out. And um, also it gets worse after the baby is born. We also found out some of the things that can go wrong in pregnancy if women are experiencing domestic violence. You mentioned things that can go wrong, such as what? Well, obviously if there's physical violence, mm -hmm. uh, particularly to the abdomen, that can cause bleeding under the placenta, it can cause premature labour, the waters to break early, um, and uh, if there's mental stress and women are depressed or anxious, um, that also could cause mental health problems afterwards um, as well. So it's associated quite a lot of bad outcomes for both the mother and baby. Because a lot of people think a pregnant woman or time when a pre woman is pregnant is a precious moment to look after the women and to love them and give them space to do, to nurture the child they have in them. But that's not really the case, is it? Well, I think for the majority of people, mm -hmm. it is. If you have a wanted pregnancy in a good relationship where there isn't jealousy or co coercive control about what you're doing, then of course it's mm -hmm. the best way to bring up children. But some pregnancies are conceived in violence. Some women get pregnant after rape or in a violent relationship. Uh, some relationships become unstable because there's a new third party on the way. Um, and for people who want to control women, uh, pregnancy, when they become slower, when they may lose their job, when they may lose their confidence, when they may be cut off from their family, actually can be a time things get worse. Yes, because actually there's statistics that says that domestic violence increases during pregnancy. That's right. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that's because pregnancy destabilizes relationships. And I think that some women realize that and some women actually abortion for example is a way out of a violent relationship um, and for some women if they have a child they then become financially dependent and so the dynamics of the relationship can change and if people are if uh, often the men are wanting power and control pregnancy and repeated pregnancies and making women pregnant and they don't want to be pregnant i think these are these are these are the things that can go wrong Give me an example of a typical case of a woman pregnant who come who you have to look after. What happened in this case and when she was abused? Um, well, what the if we don't ask, people don't usually tell us. Yes. And what in my hospital is very lucky is we've trained the doctors and the midwives to be able to ask and to be able to refer to advocates who can give women support and help. Mm -hmm. And what we found now is that quite often people come and they're worried but they don't say what they're worried about or they've got pain in their tummy or the baby isn't moving. And if we just say, how's things at home? Sometimes people will tell us what's going on. I can think of a woman who was in threatened premature labor and there was a little bit of bleeding and I was a bit worried and I finally said, what's really going on? And it turned out she'd had a fight and she'd ended up on the floor and her husband was kicking her in the abdomen and she went on and had a premature baby. Um, and she got some help and then she went back and this is often the way. She went back to the man. Well, very often people do go back because um, they haven't got financial security or they haven't got a home or they haven't been able to tell their families or because they, of course, love that person, they made a baby with that person, they can see that person as a father. So I think it's very difficult getting the dynamics right again 
Some women leave, some women stay. But that child, does the child belong to the man who was kicking her in the tummy? Well, yes, but quite often it's jealous men start claiming it isn't their baby. Um, and I think that, uh, so in this particular case I'm thinking of, uh, it was, but he was claiming it wasn't. So what do health services, what health services do we have in place for women who are going through such, uh, such abuse or trauma during pregnancy? Yeah. Well, what we have is um, uh, uh, national guidance saying that all doctors and midwives should be able to be trained to be able to ask in a confidential way mm -hmm. what's going on. And they should all be able to refer to local services because different women need different things. Some of them need help with their home, some of them need help with getting away to a refuge, some of them need to go to the police, some of them need to go to lawyers, some of them need to sort out the money in the schools. So every woman's situation is individual and different, but what she needs is help locally from the voluntary and statutory services who are around. And what I think we can do as health professionals is say, this is good for you, your mental health, your physical health, your child's mental health and physical mm -hmm. health. So now, what's the connection between domestic violence, pregnancy, and abortion? Well, um, uh, I've, I've done another study looking at abortion, and all over the world there's some research showing that uh, there are very high rates of uh, domestic, physical, psychological, sexual violence in women who are seeking abortions. So whether that's because they didn't get pregnant when they wanted to, um, they were made to get pregnant, they were the co they refused to use contraception, or the relationship changed and they thought, actually, I don't want to bring a baby into this relationship at this time. So what we found is that women who didn't tell their partners what was going on, or they were having multiple abortions, or they had other uh, problems, mm -hmm. quite often uh, they were in violent relationships. And it's a good opportunity, again, because uh, you're in a confidential setting, talking to doctors and nurses, so it's quite a good place to ask questions safely and be directed to sources of support. So how can women going through abuse while pregnant, how can they protect themselves really? In a relationship where they, they're not able to like leave immediately, what can they do to help themselves? Well, I think they should, first of all, get information. Sometimes um, just by telling your friends and your family what is going on, that's a, a, an if this happens, if I ring, if I am in trouble, please help. So telling people what's going on, sometimes that helps sort things out. Being, knowing that if things get worse, you know, people can call 999 and get away. And if people are thinking about a plan of getting away, to collect, to have a safety plan, to collect their information, their passports, their kids, birth tickets, things like that. So I think if people know that there, there is help outside, that often gives them the confidence to to stand up for themselves mm -hmm. or get away without you know, getting into, into more danger. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is to talk to somebody. And I think talking to the midwives in particular, because they see them through the pregnancy and they can tell them what the help is locally. That's the best people to talk to. So I know you've, you're one of the editors of this book called ABC of Domestic and Sexual Violence, yeah. which I think is a terrific idea. So tell me about this book. This is the book I wish I'd had when I started out as a junior doctor 40 years ago. Fantastic. It's just the basic introduction to what is domestic and sexual violence and what can we as doctors, nurses, midwives do about it. Well, what this, this book, I was approached by uh, the other editor, a woman who set up the Sexual Assault Referral Centres in London. Her name is Jan Welsh. Welsh. Yeah. Jan Welsh. And, okay. she, um, and she said there isn't a basic textbook for doctors and nurses and physiotherapists. Mm -hmm. And we asked all the best people in the country to write chapters about general practice and mental health and children and men and boys and just so that people can have their eyes open to this problem and to the extent of it and realise that if someone tells them in the privacy of a consultation what's going on in their life, not to be afraid to ask questions and empathise, write down things and give them information. Do you think, I think this book would be excellent for like GPs as well? Yeah. So that is like, I know GPs have their little um, the reference book, they check for like prescription book, 
So this is like the woman comes to you now and she's complaining some like back ache and you can see anything maybe is actually due to abuse. Mm. So it'd be good for the GP to go to this book if I try to book okay, I think they actually said this, that, if you've seen such thing that you couldn't find in your whatever reference book, maybe it's a sign of abuse. Yeah, yeah. I think it's frightening because you, you're asking what's really going on, what is it that you're hiding from me? Yes. And you're opening a can of worms. You might be finding domestic violence or sexual violence, you might find bereavement, you might find mental illness, but to give people the tools to not be afraid to say, trust me, what's really bothering you? Or sometimes I find people are experiencing violence or they're upset or there's something they're ashamed about, but if you tell me I can help. I think that's what I'm, that's what the purpose of the book is. Where can people get this book? Because I think it's not just for like doctors, midwives, social workers, or people like charities as well, can actually benefit yes, from it's as a, well. Yes, it's a basic one. Uh, you just Google ABC of domestic and sexual mm -hmm. violence and it, you can get it from the internet or some shops ordering. I it. think it's on Amazon as well. Everybody, I have to recommend this book. It's on Amazon Thank as you. well. Thank Definitely. You. So, so now tell me more. What you, what are you doing these days? Well, I'm. I've got a little bit older now, so mm -hmm. I'm, so being up at three o'clock in the morning delivering babies is, is is too tiring. I've retrained and I now do examinations of victims of sexual assault and rape mm -hmm. at the Havens. So we see largely women, obviously, mm -hmm. but children and men. And we are listening to their stories, collecting evidence for the police if possible, and also checking that they're okay, checking for injuries, checking they're not going to get pregnant, checking for infections, and also slotting them into support services so that they will feel supported uh, and that hopefully will help them recover from what is a very trauma traumatic experience mentally. So uh, I hope people will have the courage to call the police and come to the Havens. So Susan, you now moved from domestic violence, not or sexual violence. Why are you stuck in this area? <laughs> why? What's, what's the motivation? Why are you actually working in this area? Um, well, I think that um, it's a bit like being a detective when you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes with a set of problems and you try and put it together. And I realized that although I was very skilled to learn about wombs and ovaries and periods and all the rest of it mm -hmm. that quite often women came to women's health doctors with much bigger problems about being women um, maybe they came because they'd had female genital mutilation when they were younger and now they were having problems passing urine or maybe they weren't telling me about uh, child sexual abuse and what I found was the more I asked the more people told me and I thought oh, I don't know what to do so I made it um, my business to talk particularly to some very good psychiatrist friends of mine mm -hmm. about what is the best way to help somebody because you know my skills are as a surgeon I mean, not kind of limited I'm kind of limited mm -hmm. um, and I but I realized that anyone who listens to a story sympathetically um, can be helpful because they can be saying that was wrong what happened to you, that shouldn't have happened um, and I want to give you choices and because I'm a person who touches people intimately I think that it's very very important for women's health doctors to recognise that other people might have touched people wrongly intimately and I think we sometimes uh, trigger off memories and associations and things can go wrong so actually we've all got to know about uh, those secret painful things that have happened to women and girls in the past otherwise we aren't good doctors in our traditional way so I think I got interested through the puzzles of and um, through listening to what patients told me about their lives basically you just you just shows a different kind of empathy and wanting to reach people on a different level really yeah and not want to do the wrong thing I mean yes. if somebody comes and they say I'm really really hurting here and you can't find anything wrong you say well have a hysterectomy you haven't helped them or, or have some painkillers yes <laughs> Which, but, but, but you haven't helped if you haven't got to the source of the problem yes, yes. And, um, and I don't want to harm people I'm very traditional I don't want to harm people mm -hmm. and I think sometimes we can we can harm them without realizing because we're ignorant and because you know, we're all products of the society we're brought up in and we all have very traditional views but actually doctors have got to say things that happen out in society harm people their mental and physical health 
and uh, that's why we have to speak out about it. Even though we can't solve societal problems, mm -hmm. we can say this is the health part of it. Fantastic. Thank you very much for coming. I'm so happy that you, you, you got passionate about this topic and you were able to come to the show and share your information. So how can people contact you if they need to invite you to do talks or any other thing you do? I can, I can be found at the Women's Health Academic Centre, King's College London. Google or email, it's all there. Yes, Google or email. And then her name is Dr. Susan Beaulieu. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for listening. And now it's time for Felicity Recommends. Today I'm going to recommend this book, which Dr. Susan Bewley is one of the editors. It's called The ABC of Domestic and Sexual Violence. The book is available from Amazon. You can get that online or from good bookshops really in, the, in London here. Yeah. And it's for health practitioners, those who are working with people, or victims of abuse. So you get to understand a lot more and know how to get help, to be able to help these people actually better than you're doing at the moment. And also I'd like to recommend that if you're pregnant and you're going through domestic violence, you're not sure what to do or you can't speak to anybody, remember that help is available. You just have to speak up like the doctor said here. You must tell someone create a safety plan so that you know if maybe you speak to some, a friend of yours by coach, they know that you're in trouble and you need to get out. And National Domestic Violence Helpline is there for you to call, other agencies are available as well. So you need to stay safe in pregnancy and to look after yourself and your baby. So we have come to the end of the show and I'd like to say to you to contact us, you can always email us, info at itismylifeshow.com and visit our website www.itismylifeshow.com and also on our YouTube page you can remember to SLS which means to subscribe, to like and to share our page that way you also get involved in spreading this message of educating people about domestic and sexual violence for us to work together to eradicate this evil called domestic violence so until next time on It Is My Life Show with Felicity live with love <laughs>